XX. Why do I keep clicking on things while I say it and I have to say it again? Perhaps it's better if I spell it right. Always helps. Okay, so now that we have a working sensor reading application running on the Pi that's successfully providing all of our reading data and sensor data across to the API endpoint of our web application and that's being displayed inside of our web browser. We now have all of the working components to manually facilitate a climate smart agriculture approach for whichever plants it is that we're monitoring. But the final goal I would say for this project is to be able to automate things and in order for us to be able to automate we need a little bit more hardware but we also need a little bit of configuration as well. So what do I mean by automate? Well if we're able to run the Raspberry Pi off of portable power using the Pi Juice um, hat that by Pi Supply, it's kind of like a specially built UPS hat for the Raspberry Pi. It fits directly onto the top of the Pi unit and uh, it contains a battery and it contains some control circuits to start up and shut down and essentially control the power of the Raspberry Pi itself. And it can take input from whichever other power source you wish to use to charge this battery. So you can charge this as per normal on the grid, um, you know, using a the same Raspberry Pi power supply that you use to power the, the Pi directly, or it can also be powered by something like a solar panel. So particularly for our application, because we're only going to be powering up the Raspberry Pi for a few minutes at a time, once a day, or maybe once every two or three days, it's kind of perfect to work with a solar panel because we'll be able to charge up that Pi Juice battery and keep it full um, sufficiently for the times in between because it's not going to be discharging so quickly since it's not running um, full time. So I already have the Pi Juice installed, as you've seen from uh, the whole series. The Pi Juice has been attached to the top of the Raspberry Pi from the start, and it essentially has this little bridge that uh, jumps all of the GPI opens to the top of the Pi Juice um, hat. So all of the GPI opens sit in the same place, and everything works exactly the same way as it would. Your Raspberry Pi is just a little bit taller, and it has this uh, slightly heavier battery on there than it would um, otherwise. So with your Pi Juice already connected. Uh, there's a number of things that need to be done in order to take advantage of these features and the first of these would be to install the PyJuice software. Now mine is already present but um, in order to get it the first time that you're using it it's a simple uh, apt-get install sudo apt-get install PyJuice GUI perhaps it's better if I spell it right always helps all right, and uh, so the PyJuice GUI is one of two flavors. You have PyJuice GUI and PyJuice Base. Um, but if you install PyJuice GUI, that includes the PyJuice Base, which is the command line tools, um, which is very useful if you're running the, the, the Pi in a headless fashion, which I usually am. I never really have monitors connected to the Pi. Right now I'm running the desktop, but it's through VNC View on my laptop. And most Raspberry Pis you know, out there in the field, you don't want to mess with having to connect an HDMI display and connecting peripherals just to be able to interact with your Raspberry Pi and PyJuice Base as I say is to run CLI tools for interacting and configuring the PyJuice. Now that we have that software installed you'll see the uh, PyJuice battery logo appear in the top right in the system tray. There's a couple of different um, icons to show that it's either running off the PyJuice battery or it's running off the Raspberry Pi supply or it's running off the battery and not currently being charged or no battery is present or whatever the case may be there's quite a couple of them. I'm going to right click and go to settings settings and this will allow us to now configure all of the various settings of our PyJuice system. You can configure the hat itself, changing I2C addresses, EEPROM settings, um, which input of power takes precedent, be it the 5 volts from the GPIO or which would be if you're using a solar panel for instance you're getting 5 volts from there. Right now I'm charging um, the Pi Juice through USB micro. But yes, you can uh, essentially change all of these settings. You can define what the buttons do. There's three switches on the side of the Pi Juice, and you can define this whichever way you like, you know, power on the Raspberry Pi, but you can define all sorts of user functions um, on press, on release, on double press. Um, two LEDs, and again, you can decide what their color is and what makes them go on and off and why and uh, you can define what the battery is because there's a couple of larger and smaller ones. This, the default is this BP7X uh, 1820 milliamp hour battery um, which is uh, a lithium polymer battery. So again because we're only powering up for a couple of minutes at a time we're not going to be 
putting too much of a strain on that battery and uh, there's enough sunshine in South Africa for it to uh, charge up sufficiently. And that's as much as you can do on the hat configuration. Wake up alarm. So now you, with this you can define either to have a regular turn on, you can have it turn on once every 24 hours or 48 hours, or you could have it turn on at 7 a.m. every January the 5th, whichever way you'd like. Um, so a wake up alarm would then cause the Raspberry Pi to actually power up. That's the first function that we need to take care of here. And then we also want something to happen when we power it up. So we start with the wake up alarm on the Pi Juice, which uh, I'll set to be, let's say once every 24 hours, every day, 24. And that's really as much configuration as you need on the Pi Juice itself. Um, if you have a look at the GitHub page, there's a lot more information in terms of how you can tweak it further. And there's also a good uh, tutorial on what all of the GUI things that I just went through mean and how they can be configured. So I was initially going to make use of the cron table for um, running our sensor reading application automatically as well, but I ran into a number of errors. And what seemed to have been happening is that um, the the script runs on wake up. So the cron tab dash e um, I added an at reboot for the sensor reading application, the one that posts to our API and what kept happening is that the, the Raspberry Pi would run the script on reboot. That happened successfully, but it wasn't able to establish a network connection and actually do the API request, the HTTP request. So it would successfully take readings, successfully add them to the local database table on the Pi, but it's not sending them across. And I'm looking at the web applications terminal here and you see nothing happening. So I ended up uh, instead opting to, th there's a couple of different ways you can make a program run on startup on the Raspberry Pi. Um, because it's a Linux system, you do have quite a number of options. But uh, rather than making use of CronTab and trying to get that to work, since it seems that that script was running before network was ready every time. Because the script was running prior to network being in place, and uh, this, which is surprising because I did also configure the Raspberry Pi to wait for network before booting. So have network, Wi-Fi network essentially be like a first priority um, before completing its boot. Um, even that didn't seem to solve the problem whereby it's it was unable to connect and actually make those HTTP requests. So. Another method that um, can be used is to make use of rc.local. So there's an, an rc.local file which also hosts the, the commands or programs that need to be run during boot. So um, if you want the Pi to power up in headless mode, for instance, the rc.local file is a file that is checked and its commands are run whenever the Raspberry Pi is booted up. And it's really quite simple. So you get back into the Pi folder and this document this needs to be run with sudo. It's inside of the etc folder and it's called rc.local. I've already added that uh, script in but just above the exit zero line add the command of what you need to be run. It's important to use the absolute path of your uh, Python script that you want to run. So it's sudo python3 the absolute path to the script and this ampersand will make sure that it interrupts. So this is particularly useful if you have, for instance, a Python script that runs on an infinite loop, the way our sensor reading application was initially running. I've removed that while true loop um, for this instance because we only needed to run once now. But if you still had something that's running on like a while true loop, it would run that constantly and not do the rest of the booting process. So it would get stuck in that infinite loop. So that ampersand makes sure that it exits. If you don't include the ampersand and your program runs continuously, then the Pi is not going to complete the boot process. So this allows the command to be run in a separate process and the booting continues with the main process running. And if you add this bit at the end here, tells you an absolute path to the logs. If anything goes wrong with this uh, script running or to give us the output of the script um, into this pylog.txt. And you save your RC local file that way. And now all that remains is to test it by rebooting the Pi. So you'll see that I have the web applications terminal running here. I'm going to lose connection on the SSH to the Pi because it just restarted. So what we should hopefully see now in a minute or two, once the boot is completed, we should see some new entries on the terminal here are received by the API endpoint. And that way we know that the uh, Python script executed on the Pi side. And then you know that that's happening every time that it starts up. So now if you have your uh, 
wake up alarms in place and you have your Raspberry Pi actually out there in the field only connected via solar panel and Pi juice then whenever it starts up um, you know be it at midnight or at 6 a.m. every day or once every three days whenever it starts up the very first thing it does is run your sensor reading script and post those readings to the API endpoint and you can then make the Raspberry Pi power down again maybe 10 15 minutes after startup um, you know the shorter interval the longer your battery is going to last so if it is um, winter in the Western Cape for instance ah there we go our first post and our second post and we should see a third so that is posts being received on the reading endpoint and 201 being a success response saying that that content has been created if direct sunlight is uh, a scarce commodity then it might be a good idea to keep the interval shorter as short as possible i mean that was you'll have to time it and sort of play with it yourself that seemed to be two to three minutes so let's say five minutes would probably be a safe yes with about a five minute power on interval you'll be able to let that happen for five minutes every day or two that'll really let the battery last long enough and charge up sufficiently in between and then you essentially have a system that requires no user intervention you know provided the raspberry pi is within range of your wi-fi it's able to send these across power up send these across and power back down manage its own power without you having to actively tell it to do anything all right so it did get the third we were just a little bit uh just had a bit of a lag there for a second but all three readings were received and now you have an autonomous climate smart agricultural system and the beautiful thing is that this is running with one pie but if you for instance have a raspberry pi in each field for instance as long as all of them are able to connect to a network um, they can separately send all of these readings across and you can add certain identifiers that you know which Raspberry Pi these readings came from. I mean, you know, you're working with the IP address is fine if you have a list of IP addresses, but you can name the sensors coming from each Raspberry Pi in a unique way by changing the sensor reading application on each Pi. That way you would know, um, you know, which readings you're looking at in the tables. You can even set it up to have different reading tables for each Pi's readings. But the point is that you can work with as many data points and readings as you need to take care of all of your plants and the concept would remain exactly the same it's just a matter of expanding it to scale but it works in the precisely the same way and that's really pretty much it that concludes the final step of what I still wanted to add to the project we'll be moving along to other things from here and if you have any questions or issues or ways that it didn't work for you let me know in the comments and uh, ways that I could do it better why not until the next one do keep learning things the hard way why do I keep clicking on things while I say it